So the next class that we're going to build in C is an emulation of what you would do if you were building the Python list class in C. So let's just start by taking a look at sort of a Python and uh, C version of this thing. In Python, we create a new list, then we append a whole string, then we print it, then we, then we have another string, then we print it, we have another string, we print that, we ask how long is the list, we do an index, which is a positional lookup, saying where is the string Brian, then we say if Bob's in the list, where is it, or we say we can't find Bob. So we have to do an if then else and use in because otherwise we'd have to use a try catch because if you do an index to a with a string that's not there in Python, it's going to blow up. So we can either do an if then else or we can do a try catch. It's sort of six in one, half a dozen in the other. But in C, we're going to effectively call pylist new to create a new list. We're going to call pylist append. And again, remember, all the time we're calling these things that are like methods, we're always putting the instances, the first parameter. In this case, LST is the instance. So we're going to append hello world. We're going to print it. We're going to append, append catchphrase. We're going to print it. We're going to append Brian. We're going to print it. Then we're going to look at the list, length of the list. Then we're going to look up Brian and we're going to look up Bob. And in this case, I made it so that the index just gives us back negative one to say I didn't find Bob so that I didn't have to try catch because it's like a little bit more C-like. And then we do a pylist underscore del to clear up the memory. We are about to switch from being the consumer of the list object to the builder of the list object. And our job as the builder of list object is to dynamically allocate all the data that we need to make this thing work. And so we don't get to see the details of that. All we know is there's these functions that we can call and this structure that we can use. And if we call the functions right, somebody else is going to deal with all of the dynamic memory that makes this work. And you've done linked lists in previous assignments. So linked lists should not be completely foreign to you but now we're taking an object-oriented approach to implementing a linked list and hiding the implementation detail within the object, which is an important part of object-oriented programming. So here's like some basic stuff. And some of this should start looking pretty familiar. We got a L node, which is short for list node. We got a pointer to a character string. Um, and then we have a pointer to the next one. So we call that one next by convention. Next is not a keyword, next is just a really common convention when we're making linked lists. And then we, and that's just the node. So linked list is a list of nodes, but then there's kind of the list itself. And that's what the struct pylist is. And it's got a pointer to the head and a pointer to the tail and just a counter. And so if we create the new list, pylist new, we are going to allocate the, the pylist object, which is a pointer, which is eight, two pointers, 16, and four should be 20 bytes. And then we're going to, that's what star p is going to be. Then we're going to set the head to null and the tail to null to indicate that we have an empty list. We're just, we're not creating a list with things in it and set the count to zero and we're done. So it's, it's pretty straightforward. In some ways it is, this list is easier in some ways than the, the Python uh, string was. Now the destructor is a little trickier because we actually have to go through the list and we have to free up all of the text areas, not just the, um, not just the, the struct L nodes, but we've also got the char star text that we've got to get rid of. So what we'll see here is we're going to, in the pylist del, we're going to carefully start at the head and then loop through. And remember that I, free cur has got to be the last thing we do with cur. Once we say free cur for the, that's the L nodes, we got to do the free cur. We're not supposed to touch cur ever again. So you'll see I say free cur text, which is the, string that's pointed to in the current node. Then I look up next, and I, I'm looking up next before I call free cur because I'm not supposed to use cur afterwards. So I say next equals cur next. Give me the next pointer before I wipe out cur. I wipe out cur, and then I say cur equals next. And so I just, I, I created that next variable inside that function just to kind of get past the free cur so I didn't have to say cur equals cur next after I called free cur. And then loop goes through and it slowly but surely cleans up all of the L nodes. It might be zero, there might be no L nodes and head will be null at that point and while it won't even run. But you gotta free the text and you gotta know where the next pointer is, then you free the, the current one and then you advance to the next pointer and jump up to the while loop and then do the rest. And then and only then afterwards do you free the self, 
which is the actual pie list object. These structures tend to point to structures that tend to point to structures, and you gotta, when you're delling them, when you're freeing them, you gotta free them from the outside. The, the, think of it as a tree. You've got the leaves and the branches and then the trunk and then the roots. You gotta, you gotta free them from the leaves inwards. And so just be real careful about this. That's part of the reason that I give you so much sample code where I do the del for you, because I just don't want it to mess up. If we take a look at the step of freeing the dynamic memory, you're going to see that it's going to, if we have a head and we have a tail here, um, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to, to the L node that is the head, and then it's going to, the first thing that's actually going to be freed is the text, and then it's going to free the L node, then it's going to advance to the next L node, which has is, and it's going to free the is, then it's going to free the fourth thing, which is the second L node, and then it's going to advance to the third L node, and then it's going to free the fun, which is the fifth thing freed, and then it's going to free the last L node, and it'll notice that next is, is, is null, and so we're done with there's a three node list. And then the last thing we do is we free the, the pie list itself. So that the order in which we free these things is really, really important. And you think of it as the leaves outwards, right? The C is fun. Those are three strings that have been allocated. Those have to be freed first before we free the L node that happens to point to them. So every little bit of order matters. But the one thing I want you to do in this one is I want you to make the list output instead of it being dump. I, you'll notice I called this one print, not dump. And I want it to look exactly like Python's list output, which means it's got an open square brace, it's got the strings and double quote, single quotes, comma space in between them, etc. And don't Try to use string concatenation to do this because you're in C, you're not in Python. You don't even know how long these strings are going to be. What you need to do is you need to cleverly write a loop that uses printf. So think of this as you can only use printf. Don't use a string because you don't have strings. Just use printf. And remember that printf doesn't add a new line unless you actually put the new line in. So it's pretty easy to do printf open bracket, then printf single quote, printf the string, printf single quote, printf comma, et cetera, et cetera. So you gotta, it's about 10 lines of code and you know, enjoy yourself. I think you'll do a pretty good job of this and you'll be impressed when you're all done and then you'll think, oh, I'm walking down the path of Guido Van Rossum because Guido Van Rossum had to write exactly these lines of code now, he, he actually was probably using a string class, which I just told you not to use, because he didn't want to, uh, he didn't want to call printf directly. So he wanted to make it so you can convert to a string, but whatever. You're walking the path that Guido Van Rossum walked while he was building the list object. That's what I want you to do. Here's some more methods. Some are easier, some are hard. Um, len is really easy. Uh, index is not too bad. It's a for loop. If you loop through, you look for a value, and then you just return negative one if you don't find it. You just return the position. You got to kind of add to go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and return the seven if you find it. Append is a bit tricky, but hey, that was chapter six. You should know how to do that. You've actually, by this point in chapter six, you would have written one of these things. So go consult your own code at that point. And so here is the ultimate test case of our list class. You, we're just going to mimic that Python code. We're going to append a hello world string, append a catchphrase string, append a Brian string, print them all the time. We're going to print the length, then we're going to do an index lookup for Brian and Bob, and then we're going to delete it. We always delete it because we're not in Python, so we're carefully deleting it. And other than the negative one for Bob being 404 in the Python, because that was kind of a joke, um, it is identical, right? We're really starting to build what looks like a Python list. So up next, it's pretty much, you guessed it, we did a string, we did a list. Yep, it's a dictionary. We're gonna actually build a dictionary in our next bit.